Hello everyone, it's Tuesday the 9th of June and it was so wonderful to see a lot of you in, in church on Sunday, but I know a lot of folks couldn't make it or didn't feel quite safe making it, so um, greetings to you as well, I missed you. Um, I think this is a good thing that maybe has come out since this whole coronavirus has hit, is doing some of these midweek devotions as a way to sort of prepare ourselves for the sermon coming up on, on the following Sunday. So this Sunday, I'll be doing a passage from the book of Luke, and it's Luke chapter 15, and it starts at verse 11. And, it, and this is a parable told by Jesus, and it's typically called the par parable of the prodigal son or of the lost son, uh, or the parable of the two sons. And I want to read from the word of the Lord here this morning. And the, by the way, I'm in my office in the community center. So uh, that's the green paint and the white paint, uh, thanks to one of our parishioners who did a wonderful job painting it, but who wants, wishes to remain anonymous. Um, so listen for the word of the Lord. And then I've got some questions maybe for you to mull over during the week this week uh, as we approach Sermon Sunday. So uh, starting in Luke chapter 15, verse 11, and this follows the two parables, one of the lost sheep and one of the lost coin. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had and set off for a distant country and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his field to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to, his fa said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. This is the word of the Lord. We talk about uh, Jesus' mission coming coming to earth, God coming to us in the form of Jesus to tell us or to try to tell us who God is, to better understand who God is. And I think this is one of the most beautiful parables that Jesus tells us about who God is. It's so descriptive 
with human aspects of who God is and those tender uh, motherly type aspects of who God is in this parable and what that means for us in our own relationship with God or should, I think Jesus said. So I just want to maybe prepare you with a few questions to consider during the week as we as we roll in towards this Sunday in the parable of the lost son. Um, so we have three characters, God and the two sons. God is, is played in this by the, by the father. A couple of questions. Why do you think the son asks the father to divide his property? And what do you think the reaction would have been to people that Jesus was telling this, this parable to in that time? that a son would tell his father, basically, I don't want to wait until you die. I want you to give me my part of the estate now. And why do you think the father divided his estate? It certainly wasn't a reasonable request. The son would get his portion one day, uh, but the father just says, okay, and does it. What does that tell us about maybe who God is? Um, as, the, as, as we go later on in the story, to, Jew, to a Jew, what would be the significance of the lost son taking a job feeding pigs? And then what would be the significance of that lost son who is a Jew actually looking at the food that pigs are eating and wanting to fill his stomach with them? What does that perhaps tell you about how low he has, he has gone? how far he has fallen. When you read about God running to meet his son, and he doesn't, notice he doesn't wait. He doesn't sort of look out and see his son and cross his arms or sit down in the rocking chair on the, on the front porch and watch his son come, come towards him and uh, act passive aggressive. No, he sees his son far off and he actually starts running after his son. What does that tell us a little bit about God? There seems to be a lot of partying around, um, around God and around Jesus, doesn't there? What, what do you think the significance of that is, especially in light of this story and as we move ahead in this story? Um, the elder brother is an interesting figure, isn't he? Uh, the elder brother is angry. Why do you think he's angry? It's pretty apparent, but just I think it, it, it works to just kind of go through it in your head. Why is this elder brother, the one who would have received uh, the lion's share of the inheritance, uh, why is he so angry? And um, what does it mean when the elder brother says to his father, God, all these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to do? What might it say to us about uh, ourselves sometimes, and perhaps our faith and the way we approach faith. And then last of all, uh, the elder brother's son, uh, a father, God, begs his son to join the party. But we never find out, we never find out from the story whether the elder brother's heart softens enough for him to join the party. As we look forward to this sermon, and, and I would love to get emails from you or text messages or phone calls to hear your thoughts on this, but as we look forward to this Sunday of going into this in depth, what are the implications for us? If our hearts are hard and we never join the banquet, now and in the time to come, what implications are there for us? Uh, so just some things I wanted you to think about. It's so wonderful to see uh, so many of you. Look forward to seeing some of you on Sunday and continuing these uh, online services as we go along. God bless.